Great Lakes Prepping here. Well, it's tomato canning day, the day when I take pretty much all the tomatoes that I've been collecting and harvesting from my garden throughout the season and process them down into tomato sauce and juice. I intended for this to be the video that covers everything from preparing all of the tomatoes and uh, also canning everything. I'm not sure though that's gonna end up taking a while and I don't wanna fast forward through too much of it because I really wanna show you the process, especially how the uh, food mill strainer contraption works. So I'm gonna end up turning this into two a little bit shorter videos rather than just one great big long one because it's really about two different things. Preparing the tomatoes for canning and then doing the canning. So let's get started by taking a look at what we're working with, the tomatoes and the machine, and we're gonna just jump right into this. There's a bunch of steps to go through, most of which are actually processing the tomatoes down into a sauce. I generally can all of my tomatoes in sauce and juice form. And to do that, throughout the season, as the tomatoes are ready on the vine, I'll put them in a, a big freezer Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer, just keep adding to those bags, and by the end of the season, I've got a whole bunch of tomatoes to work with, and then I'll process them all at once and get my jars of sauce and juice for the year. This year I didn't go as crazy with the tomatoes, so I'm not gonna get as many jars, but that's okay. I ended up doing a lot of cherry tomatoes, and uh, you know what? I, I, I grew far more than I could ever even eat individually, so I just started throwing them in the freezer as well. But the way that I process these down, that's not gonna be a big problem. And because I like to get juice to can as well, I don't mind that there's gonna be a lot of liquid that comes out of these tomatoes. Now, if I was working with all fresh tomatoes, I would blanch them and peel the skins off. And doing that with cherry tomatoes would actually be a huge pain. But since I freeze them and kind of do it that way, it's not a problem. In fact, one of the benefits to freezing them is that when you thaw them back out, they're quite mushy and the peels pretty much just come right off anyway. But again, I don't have to sit here and peel individual cherry tomatoes because the way that I'm going to be doing this is with my very handy food mill. Now there's a few different styles and obviously a lot of different makes and models of food mills. This one's actually called the Victorio Food Strainer and Sauce Maker. And it's it's really quite handy and, uh, and it really makes quick work, relatively speaking, of things like tomatoes. And just real quick, the way this works is you put in your tomatoes, peels and all, down into this hopper start cranking the handle and a big corkscrew sort of moves it through and starts forcing everything that's uh, uh, pulp or liquid or sauce out of these very fine holes and then all of that good stuff runs down this little ramp and into some sort of collection uh, apparatus in my case a baking dish and then everything that pretty much doesn't fit through this uh, grate gets forced out through the end, and that's your peels, and anything that's like pithy, stuff that you don't want. And they make, they actually make different uh, grates for these, depending on what you're trying to do. If you're making jams, there's a different grate that I guess works better for that. I really just use this thing for tomatoes, so I'm, I'm fine with this. Like I said, it works pretty quick, but this thing will get pretty gunked up. Uh, after a little while. So partway through I'll have to stop and clean that out real well probably a couple times. So I'm going to walk you through how this is done with the little hand crank and then I'm going to walk you through how I do it that makes it actually a lot faster. Since yesterday I gave myself a fantastically deep paper cut right in the webbing of my thumb. I'm going to go ahead and wear this glove so all of this acidic juice doesn't make this extra awful. Now I'll mention that when you first get started, it's gonna be a little harder to crank. That's because the tomatoes actually kind of lubricate all the works in there and make it go a lot quicker. So the first couple cranks, a little stiffer, but we're gonna go ahead and just throw some of these in there and, uh, and see how this goes. And pretty much load this hopper up as full as we want. Found having a wooden spoon or something on hand to kind of help mash stuff down in there helps a little bit. This 
this thing clamps down to the counter really well. You may have to retighten it every once in a while. You see, we're already starting to have an easier time turning this. So most of the seeds will kick out on the, the waste tube here. I don't mind if there's seeds in it, but it's better if there aren't. So I can tell I need to add some more. It's starting to get stiff and hard to turn again. I'm gonna throw this big half a tomato in there. Why not? Just jam it on in. As these have thawed out, they they lose a lot of juice and that's fine it's it's really just water it's not even so much tomato juice I don't really want this I'll end up just kind of pouring that out Let's throw a few of these cherry tomatoes in there and see how those do. So that's pretty much the gist of how this thing works. Now, it's not that bad, you know, for this amount of tomatoes, I'm, I'd be fine to just keep cranking away at this. But you know, I have a, a modification that lets me do this a lot faster. And I'll show you that in just one minute. Basically, what I've done is I bought a spare crank handle, and I cut it down with a grinder. So it'll fit in, you guessed it, a power drill. Now, I actually did this originally for my Victorio grain mill, my flour mill, and I realized that it's the exact same crank handle. Fits right into this uh, food mill. Now, obviously, I don't want to go absolutely crazy with this thing. If I do, I'm going to be spraying tomato all over this kitchen. But it's pretty much the same concept. be careful you want to go a little slow because if you start spitting this a lot and there's not actually any tomatoes in there you're gonna be spitting dry and therefore unlubricated parts inside of the machinery here so just take your time a little bit it's still a little easier on the fingers and the wrists than cranking away a little more efficient this is easier as a two-person job. Someone can kind of keep feeding this thing. The other person can work the drill, but that's okay. It still works out pretty well. I don't have as many tomatoes as I've had in the past. Usually this whole countertop would actually be covered in them, um, but I focused a little bit more on other things this particular summer. We're still gonna get us a couple of jars out of this though. All 
All right, now, if it seems like you're starting to have less sauce coming out as you go, and it seems like it's struggling a little bit, it might be time to clean off the grate. It starts to get gummed up. It's not too bad, but you can see kind of at the end here, it's just getting filled up with pulp, and it just can't force much more through. So that's when you'd take this thing all off, scrub it under, uh, under the faucet with a little bristle brush or something, it's also a good opportunity to maybe transfer your uh, sauce into another container of some sort. I'm starting to get near the top. So I'm gonna do that now and we're gonna pick this back up in a minute. All right, we've got the grate cleaned out. We've got the uh, little dish emptied here and we're ready to do the rest of the tomatoes that are in this hopper. thing makes pretty quick work of them tomatoes now something I've often done is I'll actually take all of these peels and the, the crap and I'll run it through one more time now this doesn't work uh, as quickly because this this mush already has kind of been uh, strained it's just a lot of peels and pith and seeds and it wants to kind of jam up the grate even quicker so my patience for doing that is limited I'll usually uh, kind of do as best I can but really you could run this all through a couple more times until it is absolutely squeezed dry of all that good sauce so I'll do a little bit but I'm not gonna get super carried away Yeah, I think that's pretty good. You know what, I'm not gonna bother putting all these through a second or third time, or I should say a third or a fourth time. I'm pretty happy with, with how that's going. And uh, I'm gonna kinda move on to the next step. All these uh, peels and seeds and all that, that's going right into the composter. That's good stuff. As for the sauce, we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay, we've got the tomato -y mess all over that countertop cleaned up, and I've got all of my uh, tomato puree in this big stock pot. So I'm gonna let it heat up for a while, and as it does, it's gonna separate some more of that juice from the sauce. And by the way, it probably goes without saying, but just in case it doesn't, when I'm talking about sauce, I'm canning tomato sauce, I'm not talking about canning pasta sauce or any kind of completed final product. I'm just talking about canning the sauce from pureeing and cooking tomatoes. I, like many other canners, prefer to can just the tomato sauce, and then when I need to use it for something, I'll use it for something at that time, be it uh, tomato sauce for pasta, or pizza sauce, or uh, making tomato soup. Um, it's a little more versatile to not pigeonhole myself into um, just canning one particular recipe. Not to mention, it just makes uh, today's task a little bit more straightforward when I don't have to worry about a recipe and making sure that that recipe is uh, safe to can and all that sort of thing. I'm just talking about tomatoes. So I don't have you know a ton, all those tomatoes don't turn into a terribly huge amount of sauce and juice. I might only get a couple of uh, quarts out of this uh, whole thing as far as um, the sauce and maybe one quart of juice. But we're gonna go ahead and let this just heat for a while and do its thing. And uh, I'll start getting the next part ready. All right, I've had this simmering here for a little while, probably only about 25 minutes. And uh, I'm thinking that I wanna try doing the next step just about now. And that involves straining the thicker sauce away from the thinner juice. And you know, so much water came out of these from the freezing and thawing process. I don't really know how much juice I'm gonna end up with. Um, the, the consistency of this isn't that far off as it is. I know we're gonna get some out of it though. So we're gonna try that right now. And to do that, we're gonna be using this 
great big unnecessarily large strainer bag. This is actually from a brewing supply company. It's a pretty fine mesh, quite a bit more fine than say a, uh, a, a cheesecloth or something like that. And uh, it's, it's way bigger than we need, but that's better than way smaller than we need. And uh, pretty much I'm gonna pour it in, let what drains out pretty much right away drain out. I don't wanna squeeze it and wring out all my sauce because I'm sure I could force it through this mesh if I really wanted to. So we're going to very carefully take that piping hot stock pot full of sauce and pour it in. Okay, again, I'm going to very carefully try to lift up this whole bag without touching any of the napalm that's inside of it. Just let the water drain out of that. Again, be very careful. Just the steam from this is, is burning me pretty good. And I probably should have kept one of those oven mitts on. Okay, that's it. That actually uh, was quite a bit of juice that came out of there. I'm pretty happy with that. So right here, I'm pretty much just gonna let this uh, sit. This is good, this is what I want, that's my juice. And now I'm gonna move on to the next step. All right, now I just have to transfer this uh, sauce back into the pot. And you know what? I'm gonna be smart this time and at least wear some uh, thick rubber dish gloves because I don't want to burn myself today. You know, I got so much liquid that drained out of these that uh, I might only be left over with about one jar of sauce. And you know, only about half of my tomatoes that I that I processed here were Romas or what would be considered good sauce tomatoes. The rest were just whatever. Cherry tomatoes, some beef steak, and, uh, and, and the side effect of that is ending up with a ton of juice which I'm not upset about because I use a lot of tomato juice. I use tomato juice for my chili and some soups. Um, I might actually use as much tomato juice as I do sauce, so I'm not upset by it. But it's definitely a lesson, uh, if you've never done this before, into uh, understanding just how many tomatoes go into that jar of sauce you buy at the store. You know, it seems like a lot of work for what you get. Uh, you can buy a jar of uh, Prego for two dollars at the store and you know what I don't even know uh, 30 tomatoes might have gone into making that thing but uh, it's very satisfying to make something like this completely from scratch with your own tomatoes they always taste better you can make your own recipe you don't have to load it up with so much sugar and salt if you'd like to avoid that you're gonna get that in all those cheaper store-bought sauces anyway that's how they make kind of lame mass-produced tomatoes tasty but that's about what we're working with here for our sauce and uh, the one last thing I'm gonna do before we're ready for uh, putting these in some jars is blend it up a little bit with an immersion blender I like a little bit of a smoother sauce you don't have to do that step this is already a pretty good looking uh, a consistency uh, I just like to blend it up just a little for my own personal preference So that's it, we're about ready for the next step and that's to move on to the canning phase. You know, there's a whole bunch of different ways that people do this. Um, I've seen uh, lots of uh, instances where people put all the tomatoes just in a pot, let them stew all day long, really separate that liquid away from it. Um, maybe they'll strain it, but a lot of times people will just let it cook all day, hoping that water just cooks off. Well, in my opinion, a lot of that is wasted because you could be saving it for juice, but I guess you get maybe a more concentrated tomato flavor with your sauce if you let the water evaporate out by cooking. Uh, I've never had any problems with taste doing it the way I do it. And honestly, I just, I, I really don't like having this pot on the stove bubbling away for eight, 10 hours, just waiting for it to do what I could make it do 
with a lot less work and time. As you can see, I've ended up with probably th three or four times as much volume in juice as I have in sauce. Um, but that's okay. I mean, that's what this whole process is for. I'm trying to separate them because I use them in different ways. Nobody wants a thin watery tomato sauce, but uh, it works real well as juice. And uh, I can choose whether or not to add salt to it. Any tomato juice you buy at the store is pretty much going to have a ton of salt added into it. So I'm pretty happy with how this went, even though I didn't end up with that much sauce. So that's it. We've got our sauce and our juice ready to can. And I uh, really recommend watching the next video that I'll post right after this one that goes through all the process of canning them. So click the button over to the next video, watch the whole canning process. And uh, I'll say until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping, but fortunately for both of us, next time is in about five seconds from now. So I'll see you then.